You'll notice today that my slides are called Anything for a Friend. I'm going to start the first couple minutes by telling you about our, our project, and then I'm going to explain uh, what soul and relationships and humanity really mean to us at the resort. There are so many people in this room that do so many things that we do much better than we do, um, and, but there's one place that we feel that we are really top-notch, and, and that's definitely in our handling of people. And the Anything for a Friend means two things. Uh, number one, We'll do anything to make a friend, just like Rick said, you know, you share information and, you know, have people up so that we can talk and do all of that. But once we have a friend, we'll do anything to keep it and, and make sure that we can, uh, we can keep going with that. I started at Metropolis Resort, like Rick said, uh, 12 years ago. At the time, we were Action City, a 55,000 square foot indoor uh, fun center with go-karts, laser tag, you know, an arcade, a climbing wall, and a pizza restaurant. And then uh, three years later, we decided to take a little bit different route. I mean, everybody else goes and builds bowling, or bowling centers and, you know, all of this fun stuff, and we decided to build a hotel. The hotel was actually a, a great thing for us because we're one of the smaller communities in this room. Uh, so we started to be able to draw our own traffic from 90 miles away in the Twin Cities. You know, we're two hours away from the Wisconsin Dells where they have these beautiful, you know, big water parks, and we, have a, we ended up with a $35,000 square, or th sorry, 35,000 square foot indoor water park but we were able to keep our own traffic and bring them in. Uh, in 2009, we opened our water park. Uh, here you can see most of our stuff. Um, we have the building on the left is uh, Action City, and then the trampoline park is the part that juts out past the hotel. You have the hotel, and then the water park, our convention space, our outdoor areas, mini golf. Since this picture, we've done our, redo our, our uh, outdoor go-kart track, and we've also put in a zip line. Some of the cool things that we've done in the last two years, uh, since we've started really following the F2 FEC model, we've been coming to this since the beginning. You know, we listened when they talked about the crews and, you know, and about investing and, you know, really followed the formula and, and have been so happy with the results that, you know, this last year really, really was our, our big year for it. Tourist attractions and parks featured our trampoline park as a uh, add-on to our new fun center and, and how we were kind of one of the new hybrids. It didn't help that we, or didn't hurt that we had the water park and the hotel as well to, to join that with us and they did a nice feature about you know how this is you know kind of one of the new models coming up that you're, you that a lot of people can follow and, and incorporate all of that fun into the different things this is our a couple pictures of our trampoline park real quick our crew during this time grew from 200 to 350 people. You can see we put an indoor soft play area in. We did all kinds of different things with it. We put in brand new games, uh, spent a ton of money on our, on our arcade, put in the outdoor go-kart track with a, instead of a crappy little oval. We put in a nice, beautiful one with, with curves and, and hills and put in new carts from JJ Amusements, which have been awesome. Um, Rick already got all the free beer sponsorships by mentioning companies, so I'm just going to rip through this real quick. Uh, we put in Soaring Eagle, which has done great for us. And then our last big project that we did uh, in, in November was we finished up renovating our water park. We had some pretty tough things in there and, and had to renovate it and put in an indoor uh, playground area with a dump bucket, and it's been phenomenal for us. So you've got to be looking at, oh, and of course, last week we opened Holligate, which uh, has been awesome for us. Uh, we founded an IAPA, and uh, after seven, eight days, we've, we've loved it. It's been a, a great experience. So now the part that you guys care about. If you were bankers, you would already flip to the bottom of the books. You'd look to the bottom line. In the last year, our resort has grown in sales from $6.5 million to nearly $10 million. Uh, we would have probably cracked the 10 if we hadn't had to finish the water park project for the last two months. Our room sales, which are important to us as a hotel, have grown uh, exponentially, both in our rate and in our occupancy for the number of people that are staying. This year, we're projecting a 5 to 6% increase in occupancy. So for us, at a 107-room um, resort, I mean, that's five rooms a night, five new families that come play our toys that do all the fun stuff for it. Uh, Action City birthday parties and groups will break a million dollars in admission revenue alone, not including the food and all of the other, you know, things that they buy. And in the last three months, our chaos birthday parties and groups are up $60,000 um, from just putting in an indoor playground and addressing some of our issues. So one of the things that I picked up yesterday uh, as I was coming out of the amazing talk from the Ritz-Carlton is I heard so many people hear that talk and walk out of there and immediately give themselves an excuse. You know, they, they said to themselves, well, that's the Ritz-Carlton. They have adults. They have millions of dollars. They have all of those things. And one of the important things that I wanted to, to go over before I got into the meat of our, our relationship with this is, well, we're not the Ritz-Carlton either. In fact, while you guys are looking at this and saying, well, I can't do some of this stuff, or I don't have the money or any of that stuff. I wanted to review how we got to F2FEC. When we came into F2FEC, 
The day the hotel opened in May of 2008, the headlines for the newspaper read, the economy collapses. We had a year to go to build our water park. So, I mean, at that point, I'm, I don't know, 25 years old. I didn't even know what, you know, half the stock market stuff was or the economy, any of it. And I thought, well, that's probably not good news. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you, yeah, yeah, Mike's looking at me like, yeah, that's great. That's, you're an idiot. I'm the guy dumber than Rick. <laughs> so, two weeks later, we sign our contract with our slide manufacturer, give them $50,000 deposit, Four weeks later, they go out of business. This is awesome, right? We're like, hell yeah. This is fun. Man, this water park industry is amazing. Let's build two. No, uh, we did not do that. We owed $200,000 to our, our uh, food distributor at one time. I mean, now nobody likes owing anybody money. But if you're going to owe money to a company, the, the guys that, they're a local company, so good luck. But uh, IFT, these guys, they were so great to us. And, and, and we remember that, you know, they wouldn't even call on us to ask us for it. They came down one time and they said, it's tough. We wish you could pay, but you're going to be good for it. We know what you're going to pull out of this, and, and we're going to help you figure it out. And so that, you know, that was one of those first relationships where we started paying attention to, okay, we're at the bottom of the barrel right now. You know, we, we had all the big talks like, like some of you did too. We had layoffs. You know, we, we looked at our building and we're like, are we going to sell this? Are we going to go out of business? I mean, at, at one point, or at, sorry, at three points in our career, we had to shut down our water park for three plus months because of construction stuff that happened because we were not able to use um, the vendors that were supposed to be in business. For us, that means that we're losing about a million dollars out of the gate every time. In 2010, we lost $1 million on the bottom line. Now, most of you aren't going to want to share information like that, but I'm going to tell you like this because, because that's, that's where we really figured out who we were and, and what, what it meant for us to, to want to continue to do this. Like you said, you quit if you don't want to do this. Why, why would you sign up for this, for this abuse? So, you know, I mean, it's, it was basically the end times. We came to F2FEC after slightly recovering from it. And the, the first F2FEC that we went to, you know, um, it was about your crew, and it was about, should we pay him $15 an hour? Should we do all this stuff? We had a, a good car ride on the way home, and we went home and we said, okay, they're right. Let's go invest in our crew. We didn't go to 15, but we, we started investing in them. We started taking the time for them, and we paid them more. Oh, I think I broke it. Got it. We invested in our experience and our people in, in, in all of it for it. And, and the things that we did, you know, that we're going to lead up to the big thing, but, you know, I just want to hit on a couple of the small things real quick. Our experience, we worked on our pricing. You know, I mean, for some of our pricings, it was out of line. For some of it, was, it was low. We worked on making it better experiences. One of the coolest things that I ever heard in a speech uh, many years ago from uh, a prior version of this was from Jimmy Chapman that said, I mean, bring the kids in and have them tell you how it looks from them. So we started bringing our children in. We started bringing, um, you know, other people's kids in, our best customers, and asking them, you know, it's great that you love us, but tell us where we're awful. You know, bringing them in and, and doing that stuff. We started bringing our, our crew into it and, and working with them from that angle. Uh, we started putting on better events. You know, we took our New Year's Eve lock-in this year. Last year when we opened our trampoline park, we were ballsy and we made it $45. It was for four hours. You got a pizza buffet. And we sold 400 of them. And we're like, oh, that's, that's a pretty good turnout. This year we went to $20. We sold it for six hours. We had a pizza buffet. We had blacklight included in it. We had 1,167 people show up. We got our asses kicked. It was amazing, but it was, it was that one-in-a-lifetime experience for, for, or not lifetime, I mean, that's very dramatic, but uh, one, one, once a year experience for a lot of those kids were like, this is something cool. It was outside of our normal age range. We got a lot more middle schoolers, a lot of fun with it, and that. We started to take that concept and apply it to some of our other things where we would take bad days for us, and we would make cool events. You know, we had a Halloween bash. We had a zombie fun run that day where a bunch of Girl Scouts volunteered to dress up in zombie paint and chase you through the woods as you ran a 5K. I mean, if you've never run as fast in a 5K as a scary Girl Scout chasing you, you know, through the woods. We did an Easter egg hunt that we were told was the dumbest, craziest idea that we ever had, where we put Easter eggs in the water, and they're like, people are going to drown. And we're like, well, we've got lifeguards. It'll probably be okay. And it was cool. You can see the one adult in the back. He's got like 600 eggs back there. 
And we, we had people start coming out for our events, you know, and the biggest thing that we, we started to do with our events is we went from us being too cool to run activities, you know, where our kids would be like, ah, that's lame. I don't want to decorate cookies. But it's not for you, idiot. It's for the kids. And you get a free cookie. How hard is your job? So we started to, do, we started to go out of our way to be a little bit crazier, to, you know, kind of embrace the, the, the wild side, you know. And then we started doing other things, you know, um, where, we would, where people would get involved with it. You know, Gilbert Brown called us up, uh, for those of you that don't know about the Packers, you know, uh, he's, a, he's a very good football player. He scored a ton of home runs, I think, throughout the course of his career. <laughs> and uh, so he, he started to come do fundraisers with us, you know, and, and, and have fun with us. And that's where we get to the, now the, the, the meat of the, the material, and, and I don't need a speech for this part of it. Um, this is where, you know, the humanity of it comes into because what really happened that really changed how we operate our business, how we treat our crew, how we do everything last year was that we lost a dear friend as we were just starting to build the trampoline park. Um, that's my friend Kyle. He was the first assistant manager that I ever had. He passed tragically in a fishing accident, oh, probably two months before we started construction. Best kid you ever met. Humble. Worked harder. We used to do hours races, which was the dumbest thing that you could do. We would see who could work more hours in a week. Um, and our boss encouraged it. He's like, I'll give you $5 if you make it. You know? And so we built the hotel together. We built all these projects together. And at the end of the year, when we're getting ready to start it, Kyle's not with us. And so it was very difficult for us because so many of us had, had grown up together. You know I mean? I, when Kyle started, he was 18. I was 23. By the time Kyle turned 21, you can imagine what our crew was doing. You know, we were going out and having fun together. We worked hard. We played hard. You know, I grew up a little bit and had a kid, and Kyle didn't, and the crew continued to be our crew but Kyle's friends, you know. And so what really, what really happened for that, you know, is, is that it was tough. You know, we, we had had so many kids grow up and leave us during that that when Kyle passed, everybody turned back to the resort and said, well, this is our home now. I mean, like, where, where do we go? I went down to the lake where they were looking for Kyle and went to go, you know, to go help search. I didn't want my buddy to be alone. I didn't want to know, you know, what, what, that he wasn't, that it, to know if he wasn't gone yet. And what happened during that time was I met a police officer, and his name was Lieutenant Southworth. And he said, Ben, you don't want to be down here. The TVs are down here. They're going to try to interview you. And I said, not a problem. If anybody talks to me, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, it's fine. I'll just run away. And he's like, no, 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 it, I'll take care of it. So I'm down there as they pull Kyle out. You know, a very tough thing, you know, I mean, to watch one of your friends come out of the lake. And Southworth came over to me and he said, Ben, go. And I said, no, I'm not leaving him. And he's like, okay, well, then, you know, stay here, you know, whatever. And he goes, are you sure? And I said, no, this is, that's my buddy. We're, we're tough. I'm here. Kyle, you know, we had our funeral. Tons of people show up. A week later, and this is where I learned what those relationships and letting people see that you care about your crew, even if they're stinky, horrible, obnoxious millennials some days. Letting them see that you care is what's going to make the difference in it. Because what happened the next week, Jim Southworth's kid applied for a Metropolis Resort. 16 years old. I didn't know he was applying. They didn't ask for the referral. I walked in and I said, what's your last name? He goes, Southworth. And I go, are you the cop's kid? And he goes, yep. I go, how did you decide to work here? And he said, my dad made me. And I said, why? And he said, well, if, he said that if you, we cared about our crew, like he saw that day, that this is where he wanted him to work. Six months le later, that kid is an amazing assistant manager for us. This week, his little sister starts for us. We had a job fair a week after the, we had Kyle's funeral. And what happened was um, a kid came in for the job fair, and he said, I heard your speech at the funeral. I want to work here. And he go, I go, do you have any references? And he goes, well, the one that I know, you can't call. And I said, that's fair. If you screw this up, I'll kill you. Best cook we've hired. I have 44 seconds to do my favorite part of the speech. So, okay. Joshua's camp is the other thing that drastically has changed our, our organization. We started a, cha a charity for kids with cancer and their families roughly five years ago. It started when our boss told us, we had one boss in the whole 12 years, not our owners, that wanted to be Big Business Chicago and said that charity won't make you a dime, don't do it, it's not worth the money, run. I had already told them we were going to do it, so then I told these guys when I called them back, give me a year, this prob guy's probably not going to work here, and we'll, we'll start doing it again. So we did, we called these guys up and we start running a retreat for kids who have cancer. They bring their whole family down, they stay with us for a week, and it is seriously some of the most amazing things that we've done. 
we, the deal is that we told them we would raise all the money for them. The first time I did a golf outing, I lost $1,100. The second time I did a golf outing to raise all this money for them, I lost $100. So I'm thinking I'm moving up. But people in the community started paying attention, and what happened after that was that we started having new partners, new fundraisers. People would come in, and now, four years later, the budget for that, fund, that charity is $150,000 a year. They're doing three camps, including a bereavement camp for kids who have lost their lives to cancer. They're giving out scholarships, and they're doing extra fundraising for individual families, including the coolest one, and I know I'm out of time, and I apologize, but I'll do 30 seconds, then we'll do um, questions, sorry. And the, the fundraiser that we did was, uh, we do a family reunion where all of the families can come back. And they can come for one day, they can stay at the hotel, they get ribs, we do yard games, we drink a couple beers. I got a phone call six days beforehand from two of the families, and they called to tell us that the two of their kids who would have cancer, this would be the last thing that their children did. They knew their children were going to pass, and this was going to be the thing that they chose for their families to, to go celebrate as a family. What happened that day when I got those phone calls is I said, well, ribs and yard games just aren't going aren't gonna to cut it this year, kids. That's bullshit. You know, so I said, we need to do something big. We need to throw a parade. We need to... And the kids latched onto it, and they said, let's do a parade. Then we decided to do a fireworks show. Now, this is a long story, and all of my stories are, are long, and I'll be happy to tell them over beers. But it ended up like this. We ran a completely illegal parade, a completely illegal fireworks show, which the police and the fire department attended. <laughs> City council ignored, despite a tenuous relationship with us. And by tenuous, I mean... They hated me, and last year when I accidentally invited them to our appreciation party, they threatened to find me $1,000 for any of their members that showed up. So then I had to uninvite them, which really makes them not like me. And when we did this parade, what happened was six days after we started planning it, 240 floats showed up. Marching bands, every company in the world, car shows, dance teams, all of it, they all showed up ran this parade, and the coolest part of it was, at the end of the parade, there was two surprises. Number one, the kids didn't know that the surprise was going to be there. Number two, the kids were the last float in the parade. So they walked through this parade. They got to run through it. The kid in the front, Matthew Winter, was one of the kids that we did this specially for. Both of the children passed away uh, about two months later. And that was the thing that they still talk about. And so today, when you, know, when you guys are talking about your relationships and how you build people, you know, the thing that I want to stress to you is, is last night in, in the talk, they talked about making sure that you look for the people in your organization that care, that you look across that room and you respond to the people that care. But what I want to make sure that you stress to you is, is make sure that your people see that you care. And your people are your crew, they're your community, they're your friends, you know, all of that. Make sure that they understand that because once you have that, it is a lot easier to get a crew member or people to work for you, to give you money, to do all of those things because that's what they, they know that you're going to do anything for them, to be their friend. And the best thing I can tell you about all of that is, is that it's not that hard. I mean, if it was, I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm not a smart kid, you know. Um, but, and it doesn't have to be kids with cancer. It doesn't have to be any of that stuff. Find something that you care about and that your organization can care about. And I will tell you, it has done wonders for our business for it. So, and the last part of it is, is, I mean, it doesn't have to be free and money doesn't have to come last, but the best things that we've done for our business have been the, have been the free marketing that we've done for it by, by doing things like this. So, cool. Right, questions? Everybody, Benny Anderson. Benny.